this is uh, hello. This is a uh, Christian students at UT Tyler. Uh, this is our spring semester 2021 Bible study. Uh, this semester we have been covering God's economy, and we are on lesson number 13. This is the last Bible study of the semester, uh, and the title of lesson number 13 is the key to experiencing Christ, the human spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a key. We want to experience Christ. And there is a key. Amen. That key is, is our human spirit. Amen. So we're going to fellowship about this. Uh, and uh, But before we do, I just wanted to do a review because we've covered a lot of ground this semester. And uh, hopefully this will not be a uh, comprehensive review. But uh, here's our, our wire diagram. Uh, so uh, we've been covering God's economy. So we've been covering every step of God's process that he went through in order to make himself one with man. All right, so in eternity past, you know, God is all alone. Uh, he, has a, he has a heart's desire. He has an intention. Amen. He wants to make himself one with man. Amen. So he made man in a particular way. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. So I don't, I don't want to spoil it. All right, but we're in his image as a vessel to contain him, to express him. But because Satan, you know, God's enemy, he came in. Uh, he tempted, deceived Eve and Adam. They both fell. And so sin got injected into man. So in that condition, God cannot add himself to man. So he has to go through this process in order to accomplish his heart's desire. That had, God's intention has not changed at all. All right, he will accomplish what is on his heart. So he passed through this process. All right, firstly, becoming a man. And we talked all about what that meant in his incarnation. It's wonderful. It's the infinite God. He's been the finite man. Divinity is mingled with humanity. Right? Then in his human living, uh, he, God, Jesus was a man, a genuine 100% man who lived by the divine life all the time. He always was expressing God in whatever he was doing, right? Uh, you know, if he, he was playing as a child, God was playing in a child. If he was eating breakfast, God was eating breakfast in this man, Jesus. If he was a carpenter working on some wood, God was doing it, right? Uh, and then obviously when he was doing these uh, other things in his ministry, like casting out demons and speaking the gospel, those are very obvious, right? Yeah. But actually, everything he was doing, he was uh, expressing the bountiful God uh, in his rich attributes through his aromatic human virtues. <laughs> That's what he's doing. His human life. And then he died an all-inclusive death on the cross, accomplishing judicial redemption for us. Right? He terminated all the negative things on one hand, and positively in his death, he released the divine life. Right, he became in resurrection, he became a life giving spirit. Amen. Right, he's able to give life because he has dealt with all the negative problems on the cross. Right, and so he is the spirit. Right, our, our, our God is triune, he is God the Father in the Son as the spirit reaching us. Amen. Right, so he's eternally triune, always, Amen. but not until after his death and resurrection could he be the life giving spirit. Amen. So actually, in this process here, God was, was uh, uh, we like to use an example of tea, right? Um, you, you make a, you might make tea in a different, different kinds of ways. You, but firstly, you start with some hot water, right? And then you add a tea bag in there or tea leaves, depending on your pleasure. But the tea bag, we'll use that. And the tea from the tea bag seeps and saturates all the water, right? And so now it's no longer just water. It's no longer just tea. It's tea water, mm -hmm. right? So that's what God, when he became a man, he's a God man, Amen. right? Tea water, Amen. right? Uh, and so if you take a sip of that tea, you get both water and tea, yeah. right? They're not separate. They're distinct, but not separate. And, uh, and then, but furthermore, if you want to add some, some additional things to your tea, like you might want to add some cream, you might want to add some honey, or add some lemon, right? And then you stir all that together and you take a drink. And when you take a drink, you get all of those elements mm -hmm. in one sip. Yeah. You get the water, you get the tea, you get the honey, the lemon, the cream, all of it. And so that's what happened through God's process here. He Amen. 
humanity. He added his perfect humility. He added his all-inclusive death. He added his all-germinating resurrection, right? His transcendent uh, ascension, right? His wonderful enthronement. All of these ingredients are added into the spirit. And so now as the spirit, he is in our spirit, right? And so, and so on God's side, he is taking care of everything on his side. On our side, we have to take a drink. Amen. right we have to sip and so he needs our cooperation Amen. so firstly what we saw after passing through all this process we have to experience god's judicial redemption right to satisfy god's righteousness righteous requirement and so uh that's our first step in our salvation right but god has a complete salvation it doesn't end with just being redeemed and experiencing his judicial redemption no i need to be organically saved in life Amen. in my whole being right uh and so he does this by his life organic means life right he is supplying his life he's a life giving spirit yeah. so he's giving life every time i contact him and this life is his eternal life with all the elements added to it it's actually he himself as life to us okay so that's that's what we've been covering this whole semester step by step that's a lot yeah. right that's a lot and it's wonderful right uh and so uh Today, we're going to talk about the key to experiencing all of that. We've been talking about it, and we have touched it. We have enjoyed it, but we need to focus on the key. Amen. This is the last Bible study of the semester. That means the summer is ahead of you, and I am burdened that when you are in this, you know, you're at home during the summer or whatever, wherever you're at, you have the key, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you would have a key to, to turn on. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, there we go. We're sharing my screen here. General topic, God's economy. And then the key to experiencing Christ, the human spirit. Amen. Amen. So we have a verse here. Uh, how about uh, everybody who's in the room with me here? We read Colossians 2.6. As therefore you have seen the Christ, Jesus the Lord, walk in him. Amen. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful verse, right? Oh, we have received the Christ. We have received Jesus the Lord, right? And so now we need to walk in him. Okay, so how do we walk in him? I want to walk around in Jesus, right? I received Jesus the Lord. I received the wonderful triune God has passed through all, all this process. I want to walk around in him. I want to enjoy my inheritance. So, okay, so we're going to talk about that. We need the key, right? Um, and so the key begins, we're going to dive into the key here. Uh, let's read uh, Roman number one. How about, uh, how about Roger? Can you read uh, Roman number one? Uh, and then also, also read 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Uh, so 1 Thessalonians 5.23, and, and the God of peace himself sanctify you for it, and he and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved from fear. Amen. So here we see in Roman number one, man is of three parts, right? The spirit, the soul, and the body. Okay. So this is how God made us. All right. And we've talked about this before. So we just want to talk about it again. All right. So here we see the most clear verse in the Bible that shows man is of three parts right spirit soul and body okay and first that's what i mean enumerates it right may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete so we need to be very clear that we are three parts right our body context the physical world our soul the context the psychological world and our spirit context the spiritual right uh, okay so hebrews 4 12 so we need to know that verse okay this is another verse you need to cement in your being. It needs to be constituted into you. Okay. I mean, you need to be very clear. Uh, and you need to help others be very clear. Because if, you, if you're not clear, what happens is you use the wrong part of your being to try to contact God, understand God, experience God, which can lead to so much frustration in your Christian life. Right, um, and so we need to see that we are spirit, soul, and body. Okay, Hebrews 4.12 is also another verse that we need to be very clear about. Um, how about 
Uh, Richard, you still there? You want to read Hebrews 4.12? I'm on, brother. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and operative and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. Amen. Amen. So here this verse reads, and this verse is crucial, is to see that the spirit and soul are different and distinct. Because there is a thought out there that, oh, they're the same thing. You, you can use spirit and soul interchangeably. They're synonym. No, they're not. Okay, they are distinct. They're separate. Here in this verse, it shows very clearly they can be separated. They can be divided. All right, the word of God is living, operative, and even can divide our soul from our spirit. And here in this verse, it compares it to joints and marrow. So the joints and marrow, they're very closely related, but they're two separate things, right? So there's something that can be divided, right? Okay, so we need to see this so we can be clear about experiencing Christ. Okay, and then in Proverbs 20, 27, uh, I'll read this verse. It says, the spirit of man is a lamp of Jehovah, searching all the innermost parts of the inner being. Okay, I've had this question uh, posed to me. Like, well, well, wait a minute. How do you know that's not talking about the, the, the spirit of God? I never heard, you know, spirit, you know, I've heard of the Holy Spirit. I've heard of the divine spirit. I have never heard of this human spirit you're talking about. I even had someone aggressively ask me, does it say spirit of man in the Bible? Does it say spirit of man? Yes, it says spirit of man in the Bible. <laughs> Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man. So man has a human spirit. Amen. That spirit is meant to contact, receive, and contain God, who is spirit. So we need to see that. This is the key. Amen. Right? If you want to get anything accomplished, you have to know uh, where to start, right? And and uh, we're, we'll talk about this more, but, uh, you know, even just the five senses in the physical realm, right? We have our sight. We have hearing. We have smell. We have taste. We have touch. Those are all, you know, senses that we have that help us substantiate the physical thing, right? So if I want to see color, if I want to know what color is, I need to use my eyes. If I want to, you know, listen to music, I have to use my ears. So you don't use your ears to try to eat a hamburger, right? That's the wrong organ. So we have to know the right organs of our being, the right parts of our being in order to use them correctly. So we have a spirit, and our spirit is to contact God. So we're going to see this more clearly, right, uh, as we go through this, okay? So Roman number two, uh, God is spirit, Amen. okay? There's a very succinct <laughs> Roman numeral, maybe the shortest Roman numeral I've had all semester long. God is spirit. Amen. That's a big deal. We need to know the substance of God if we want to contact him. All right. If, okay, so uh, in, in point A, uh, whatever Christ is, whatever he did, whatever he obtained and obtained have all been included in the life-giving spirit. So at the very beginning right, of our, our Bible study, we went through the, the wire diagram. All that God has done, all that he is, all these obtained and attained is wrapped up, is important into the spirit. Amen. It's important into that cup of tea. Yeah. Right? All of it is there. It's in the spirit. Amen. Do you want love? It's in the spirit. Amen. Do you want peace? It's in the spirit. Do you want the Father? In the spirit. Do you want redemption? In the spirit. Amen. All right. What what do you need? It's in the spirit. Amen. Okay, God, it's it's been added there. Okay, so here this verse, John 4, 24, very succinct. Uh, how about let's see? Uh, how about the ones who are in my in the room here with me? Why don't you read? Uh, John 4, 24, 1 Corinthians 15, 45, and 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Amen. God is spirit. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. And the Lord is the spirit. Amen. So here we see, right? God is spirit. The last Adam, who is Christ, became a life-giving spirit. The Lord is a spirit. So he is a spirit. You want to contact God, God is spirit. So you have to have the right apparatus, the right organ, right? Uh, even right now, physically in the world, 
you know, there are radio waves floating through the air right now. There are cell, cell phone waves floating through the air, you know, Wi-Fi waves floating through the air. So in order to substantiate the radio wave, you need to have the right device, right, right receiver. So, you know, if you try to, if you try to use your eyes and ears and taste and smell and touch, you cannot substantiate the radio wave. Like there's no radio waves. What are you talking about, Joe? I, what are, what are you talking? I don't see them. I don't touch them. I can't. You're using the wrong receiver. But if I get a radio and I turn it on, which has the right receiver with the antenna and everything, all of a sudden, oh, music. You can hear music, right? Oh, wow. Where did that music come from? It's coming from the radio waves, right? So God is spirit. So in order to substantiate Him, we have to use our spirit. All right. This is what we're getting. Uh, getting to okay uh, all right and then uh, in john 14 uh 16 through 20 uh i'll just kind of skim over this as a long little section here but here we see the triune god you know, this is the lord jesus speaking i will ask the father we see the father he will give you another comforter okay another comforter so the lord jesus is a comforter but the father is giving another comforter that he may be with you forever oh well, it's a person right even the spirit of reality. Oh, amen. Okay, the comforter is the spirit. That's what he's talking about. Okay, the spirit is a person. Amen. It is God the Father in the Son as a spirit. It is not a thing. And I'm saying using the word it. Okay, I'm, I'm forgiving for that. He is not a thing. It is a, not a power that you expect to fall upon you. Or some kind of, you know, I, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Uh <laughs> No, the spirit is a person, okay? The spirit of reality, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not behold him and know him. But you know him, because he, he abides with you. So he's referring to himself, the Lord Jesus, and shall be in you. Amen. So right now I'm with you, but I'm going to be in you, Amen. right? I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. Amen. Wait a minute. Didn't he just say the comfort was coming? And now he says, I am coming. What does that mean? He's the spirit. Amen. We don't have three separate gods. Amen. He is the Father in the Son as a spirit. I'm coming to you. Right? Um, you know, a little while, the world holds me no longer, but you behold me because I live. You also shall live because I'm going to become the life giving spirit. Amen. Amen. So you also shall live. Amen. Amen. Right? You shall have the eternal life, the divine life. And in that day, you will know that I'm in my Father. Right? And I in, and uh, uh oh, I believe something in you and me, and I in you, right? Oh, this divine human incorporation. Okay, how how is it possible? Because he is a spirit. Again, okay. yeah. amen. All right, Roman numeral three. About uh, Roger, are you there? Can you read Roman numeral three? Yes, yes. Uh, since God is spirit, we must contact him. Worship him and fellowship with him in our spirit and by our spirit. Amen. Okay, we must, right? You need to highlight that word, underline that word, circle that word, put check marks around that word. We must contact him, worship him, fellowship with, with him in our spirit and by our spirit. Okay. Uh, we must. There's no way around it. It's like the, you're trying to listen to colors. You're trying to eat the hamburger with, with your eyeball. Doesn't work. You must use your mouth to eat the hamburger. You want to contact God? You must use your spirit. Amen. Not your body. Not your soul. Your spirit. Okay, we're going to talk about this a little more here. Okay, point A. When we believe in the Lord Jesus as our Savior... The Spirit of God came into our spirit. Now, this life-giving Spirit has come into us and is mingled with our spirit, just like the tea got added to the water. They're, they're one now, right? They're just one, uh, thereby joining us to him as one spirit. Okay, so here we have some verses here, uh, John 16, 13. But when he, the Spirit of reality, this is the Lord Jesus again talking, Spirit of reality comes, he will guide you into all the reality. Oh, so don't you want to be guided into all the reality? Amen. Well, the only thing that is real is God himself. 
Amen. right? And all his divine attributes and riches, right? Uh, so because we have the spirit of reality, he can guide us into all the reality. Mm -hmm. But we need to be guided into yes. our experience of God more. Amen. Okay. Uh, by the spirit. And so Roman, uh, sorry, John 3, 6. Uh, so this begins when we are first born in our spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, how about Nelly read John 3, 6 and 1 Corinthians 6, 17. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Amen. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Amen. Amen. So we're born, right? We receive the Lord in our spirit. The receiver, you know, when we first repent and believe in the Lord, we activate that receiver and boom, the spirit enters into our spirit. We're born. And then now we are joined to him. We are one spirit. Amen. Okay. I like to emphasize it says here, he is joined to the Lord is one spirit. one spirit it does not say is one spirit with him mm -hmm. it says one spirit mm -hmm. okay with him may mean me you can mean like side by side right no, no we're one spirit that it's the tea bag got into the water and the tea saturated the water now it's just tea water it's not the teas with the water on the side right it's one spirit Amen. okay so the triune God is in your spirit. Yes. Okay. So do you want to experience Christ? Yes. He is in your spirit, yes. in the human spirit. Okay. Uh, here are some more verses that show this. Second uh, Timothy four twenty two, uh, Romans eight sixteen, and First Corinthians three sixteen. How about uh, Richard? You want to read all three of those verses? Okay. Amen. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. Amen. The spirit himself witnesses with your spirit. Amen. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? Amen. Okay, so here, where, where is the Lord? The Lord be with your spirit. He's in your spirit. The spirit, that's the Holy Spirit himself, witnesses with our spirit. Okay, we're one spirit. All right. First Corinthians 3 16. Do you not know? All right. The spirit of God dwells in you. Where does he dwell in me? My spirit. Does he dwell in my body? Is he somewhere in my lungs right now? All right. No. <laughs> That's not where he dwells. That's not where he makes his home. Is he in my soul? Ooh. Oh, maybe if you just, yeah, maybe if you just can receive the Lord, he's not in your soul yet. But if you if you enjoy the Lord, uh, you know, he might have spread some in your soul. So you can say, yeah, there's a little bit of God there. But he lives, his address is my spirit. Yeah. Right. And he is, yes, he's desiring to spread into all parts of my being. But if I want to contact him, I cannot go to my mind. I cannot go to my emotion. I cannot go to my will. I need to go to my spirit. Amen. Okay. Uh, so the this point here, Roman number four, is a big one. Let's all read this one. Roman number four. If, if we know how to turn to our spirit, we can contact Christ. This is the key. Amen. Okay. This is the key. If you know how to turn to your spirit, Jesus is in my spirit. The trying God. And all that he is, is accomplished, is attained, obtained, it's in my spirit. If I know how to turn to my spirit, that is the key. Mm -hmm. All right, I need to learn to turn to my spirit. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go through these points here, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, a, before we were saved, all of us lived, walked, and had in our, our being in the soul. So our soul, uh, as a reminder, we have mentioned that this, this uh, Bible study yet. Uh, but our soul is composed of three parts, right? Our mind, our emotion, and our will. So that's our personality, right? I have my mind, my emotion, my will. And so before I was saved, I just lived according to my mind, my emotion, my will. You know, whatever I thought, whatever I felt, you know, I would just make choices based on that, right? And so that's how I live. That's how we all live, right? But then, and point B, after being saved, we have another life within us, who is Christ himself. So Christ is a person. Mm -hmm. The spirit is a person. 
And this person has his mind, his emotion, and his will. Right? So we need to learn to live by this life. Okay? Because uh, we have another life now. Uh, so our need today, point C, is that we must turn to live in another direction. That is, we need to turn from being in our soul, our mind, emotion, will, to turn to our spirit. Okay? Uh, and point D, Christ is in our spirit, and if we would meet Christ, we must turn to our spirit. Before we do anything, go anywhere, say anything, we must turn to our spirit. We must exercise our spirit at all times and in all places. We're talking about every aspect of your human life. We're not talking about simply, oh, when I'm going to read the Bible, let me turn to my spirit. I'm going to go talk to a friend about God. Let me turn to my spirit. All right. Uh, no. It's what shirt are you going to buy? You, I need a new shirt. I need a dress shirt for a job interview. You go to the, the department store. And what shirt, Lord, would you are you buying? All right. What tie are you buying? Uh, you know, you get invited to go someplace by a friend. Lord, how do you feel about this? You know, you might you just... When you live in yourself and your soul, you're just, oh, yeah, I want to go there. Mm -hmm. You know, and it may not be anything worldly or sinful. But let's go have barbecue. Let's go to Stanley's Barbecue. It's a famous barbecue restaurant here in town. Let's go to Stanley's Barbecue for lunch. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, you're in your natural man. Yeah. You may just say, well, yeah, I want to go. Okay, how do, what about the Lord? How does the Lord feel? Maybe the Lord is like, no, I don't, I don't want you to go. You know. Oh, but Lord, isn't there's nothing sinful or worldly there? No, I just don't want you to go. <laughs> you know, or the Lord may be like, yeah, that's fine, go. Uh -huh. Right? Before we do anything, before I say anything, yeah. before we go anywhere, yeah. what life am I living by? Mm -hmm. So we need to learn to turn to our spirit. Right. This is not automatic. No. You're not going to roll out of bed and all of a no. sudden I am living by Christ all the time. No, I need to learn to turn to my spirit in all things, right? At all times and all places. Uh, so this is a lifelong process, right? Uh, so anyways, this is the key, right? If we want uh, to contact the Lord, enjoy him, experience him, have his mind, have his emotion, have his will, I need to turn to my spirit. Okay, so here's our verses here uh, related to denying the soul. Okay, so Matthew 16, 24, 25, and John 12, 25. Uh, the Lord here says, If anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Whoever wants to save his soul life shall lose it. But whoever loses his soul life for my sake shall find it. John 12, 25. He who loves his soul life loses it. And he who hates his soul life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. So what the Lord is talking about in our diagram, three circles here, is deny living by your mind with emotion and will and turn to me come to me follow me where am i i'm in your spirit Amen. so turn from your soul to your spirit mm -hmm. right turn from your mind turn from your emotion turn from your will to your spirit right um so we have to learn to turn and and not live by the soul life but actually live by our spirit so here in galatians uh, 5, 16, and 25. All right, Charlene, you read those verses. Yeah. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the flesh is against the Spirit, and the lust of the flesh is against the Spirit. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So walking, it denotes uh, our all of our activity, all of our, you know, our living, our manner of life. All right, walk by the Spirit. All right, live by the Spirit. Uh, so we need to learn, right, to do this. In Romans 8, 4, uh, that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us. We do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we need to learn to walk according to our Spirit, Amen. right? Uh, and so this is what we need to learn. Uh, day by day, moment by moment. Yeah. We may have lots of failures. That's okay. Yeah. We just repent. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I spoke. I, I said those things. And I know they were not from you. 
right? Oh Lord, sorry for living independent of you. Amen. All of those experiences are good actually to have. So it, it causes us to realize how much more I need to depend on the Lord. Okay, so here we are. The keys, right? We're seeing how important our spirit is. We need to exercise our spirit. And the way that we exercise our spirit is by calling on the name of the Lord. There's a simple way. Simple way. I'm going to give you two ways this summer. I want you to practice enjoying, exercising your spirit, contacting the Lord. The first simple way is to call on the name of the Lord. Okay, so Genesis 4.26. This is the third generation of man. Enosh, at that time, man began to call upon the name of Jehovah. From Genesis chapter 4, the third generation of man. Man began to call upon the name of Jehovah. Right? And this calling is an audible calling. Right? God gave you a mouth to use it, to, to praise him, to contact him. Right? To call on him audibly. Amen. So it began in Genesis 4, and it runs through the whole Bible. And I can't put all the verses here. Right? But it runs through the whole Bible, calling on the name of the Lord. So Acts 2.21. Why is it important? It shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. Okay, saved initially when I first believed in the Lord, but also saved every day. I need to be saved from my sin, my worldliness, my flesh, my natural man, all these things. I need to be saved. Amen. So I need to call on the Lord. Amen. Okay, and then here in Acts 9.14, the Apostle Paul here, he has authority. Actually, this is when he was Saul. He has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call upon your name. So the, the early Christians there in the church in Jerusalem, they called on the name of the Lord audibly so that the persecutors could identify them. Saul wanted to arrest and bind all who call upon his name. I can identify that you are a Christian. You are a follower of Jesus because you called on his name. Yeah. So that's what he did. They would go around hearing people calling on him and arrest him. Right? So this is audible. So this means we need to say, Oh Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Oh Lord Jesus. Right? I need to call audibly. I can call quietly too. You know, there's certain environments that you just can't call out loud, you know, but I can call inwardly, quietly. But it's you're much more released when you're able to call out loud. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus. Right. Amen. Oh, from the depths of your being. Okay, and then Second Timothy two twenty two. So flee youthful lusts. Right. Oh, we want to flee youthful lusts. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those. With those. Right. You need companions with those. Who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Right? I need companions that call on the Lord. First Corinthians 1, 2. To the church of God which is in Corinth. With all those who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In every place. Right? Not just in your bedroom. Right? Not just in your car when you're by yourself. Oh, but in every place. If you are in a place where you cannot call on the name of the Lord. And you're there voluntarily. You need to get out of there. <laughs> Okay, if you're there in class and you can't do it because you're going to disrupt the professor, okay, that's different. <laughs> but if, if, it's, if you're somewhere where like, oh man, I can't call on the name of the Lord here. This is not a good place. Get out of there. Yeah. All right, get out of there. Amen. Amen. Uh, okay, and then in Romans 10. Uh, sorry, I have many verses. I'm very pretty. This is the last Bible study of the semester. If you confess with your mouth, Amen. open your mouth. Jesus is Lord. Right. Yeah. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart there is believing unto righteousness. But with the mouth there is confession unto salvation. Right? For the scripture says, everyone who believes on him shall not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all and rich to all who call upon him. Amen. For whoever, amen, calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. All right. I want to be saved. I want to experience, and I'm talking about organic salvation. My eternal salvation is secure. But organically, I need more life. I need life in my mind, emotion, will, and eventually my body. Okay. The simplest way. Not the only way. 
the simplest way. Call on the name of the Lord. I don't know how many thousands of times I've called on the name of the Lord in my life. I praise the Lord for that. Oh, I thank you, Lord. You gave me a simple way to contact you. And every time we call on his name, something gets dispensed into it. You're, you're not aware of it. You're not sensitive to it. But something is being dispensed every single time. Okay. Okay. So let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 3 uh, together. No one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Right. So you see how simple this is? Oh, I'm in my mind. I got a lot of things going on in my life, my emotions, and maybe I'm depressed. Right? I have a weak will, all these things going on. And I just, it's just, I feel so hard for me to get to my spirit. Okay? The simplest way to get to your spirit is to call on the name of the Lord. Right? If you say, can you say Jesus is Lord? Well, the Bible here says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. All right? So, oh, if we can do that. And then we can contact our spirit. Something will happen. You still may feel depressed. Okay, don't misunderstand me. You know, you may still have a lot on your mind. But you say, oh, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Oh, you're touching your spirit. Amen. Right, and the Lord is being supplied to our soul. Amen. Okay. All right. And then the second way, second key here to exercising your spirit, being enriched with the word by exercising our spirit to pray, read. Amen. Okay. So we need uh, the Bible. The importance of the word of God to the believers, right? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. So the word is the embodiment of God. Okay, Jesus is the embodiment of God. And then in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed and profitable. Dot, dot, dot. All scripture is God-breathed. So we need to come to the scripture and get the breath of God. right? Because you can come to the Bible with your mind and just get knowledge. Or you can come to the Bible with your spirit and get God's breath. Or get life. Okay. So this is what we want. Uh, in the essence, point B, the essence of the word of God is life to the believer. John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words which I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 3, 6, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. If we just have the black letters of the Bible on the white pages, it's just death. It's just dead. It kills. What I need is the spirit in the word so i need to learn to turn my to my spirit when i come to the word okay and so uh because the word has the functions right it has many functions but here we're just talking about the function of giving life to the believers first peter 1 we see that we are regenerated through the living and abiding word of god first peter 2 2 so we're born when we receive the word of god uh the life in the word of god and then as newborn babes we drink the milk that's in the word so we can grow. In Matthew 4, 4, uh, we see that the word is also bread. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. So whether you're a baby, the word is milk to you, or maybe you're a little more developed, you have a little more growth, guess what? You still need bread. Right? You still need the word of God. And Jeremiah 15, 16, oh, we need to find the Lord's words, and we need to eat them, not study them. Right, or simply memorize them, but oh, I need to eat them. Amen. Right, your word became to me the gladness and joy of my heart. And then we need to use our spirit to pray, read, and our mental faculty to receive the spirit and the life. We do need to use our mind to understand what we're reading, but I need to use my spirit to get life and life supply. And so we saw this verse earlier, receive the word of God. Uh, actually, we saw part of this uh, verse. Ephesians 6, 17, 18, receive the word of God. How? By means of all prayer and petition, praying at every time in spirit. This is where we get the little phrase, pray, read. We are receiving the word by praying at every time. 
Great reading. Amen. And we need to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Amen. Okay, so here's a little demonstration, a tiny, small demonstration, what I mean by prayer reading. You just turn to the Lord and you take a little verse and just pray over it. So I'm going to give a little tiny demonstration. Okay, so I'm going to pray over Colossians 3.16. Okay. Oh, Lord Jesus. See, I, I turn in my spirit by calling on his name. Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Oh, Lord, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Amen. Oh, I want to let the word. Oh, I want to allow the word. Oh, the word of Christ. Thank you for your words. Oh, deliver me from all other words. I want to let the word of Christ dwell in me. Oh, dwell in me. Oh, I want you, the word to make your home in my heart. Amen. Dwell in me richly. Amen. Oh, richly. Amen. Your words are rich. Oh, I want them to dwell in me richly. Amen. I don't want to be a poor Christian. Amen. I want to be a rich Christian Amen. filled with the riches of Christ. Amen. So, Lord, I just would let this word dwell in me richly Amen. today, Lord. Amen. 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 So we just pray like that. Oh, that's the way. Oh, you're just praying the word of God back to God himself. There's some food there. There's water there. There's breath there. Supplying life to us. Uh, so, Lord, Jesus. Oh, Lord, cover our summer. Oh, Lord, we pray that we'd be experiencing you all summer long. We'd be using the key. Oh, we'd be turning to our human spirit. Thank you. You're one spirit with us. Oh, Lord, he joined the Lord's one spirit. Oh, every time we turn to you, we, we turn to our spirit, we get you. Amen. I think you've made it so easy. Amen. All we have to do is say, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Oh, and it's our great joy to say, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Oh, so cause us to call on you throughout the summer. Amen. Call us to, uh, cause us to pray over your word. Amen. We would not just come to your word in a mental way. Amen. We come with an exercise spirit. Amen. To spend just a little time on a verse to pray over it. Amen. Oh, Lord, to get food from the word. Amen. Get water in the word. Amen. To get your breath. Amen. All scripture is God breathed. Amen. We want to breathe you in this semester. Yes, and Lord. breathe out all the other things. Amen. Oh, so Lord, keep us Amen. all summer long. Amen. Oh, turning the key. Amen. Turning to our spirit. Amen. Even learning to turn to our spirit. Amen. Amen. Love you, Lord Jesus. Love you, Amen. 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 Amen.